Hi foodies, my second state is the one that I actually live in, Illinois. That's Illinois, not Illinois. And Springfield, our state's capital, features the horseshoe sandwich. When looking for foods to rep Illinois, this was brought to my attention. I actually, sorry, had never heard of it, but I am going to give a shout out to it because apparently, evidently, there is a world outside of Chicago in Illinois. <laughs> I know a lot of people outside of Chicago wish Chicago was just its own separate state, but we're not going to go there. This looks like a pretty d delicious sandwich, but I'm going to make our Chicago iconic Chicago hot dog. Yes, it's true. We love our hot dogs and there's a lot of rich history behind it. I, apparently, it was created in the Great Depression as a way to, you know, have a cheap uh, kind of all-in-one meal, your veggies, your protein, your carbs, all in one. And it became a huge hit, huge success to this day. We adore our hot dogs here. Now, if you ask anybody in the city where to go, Gene and Jude's would be where they would send you. And ironically, it's right outside the city in River Grove, Illinois. But, um, you know, there's the Wiener Circle. There's, like I showed you, Super Dog. There's hot dog stands all over the city but yet everybody from out of town goes to Portillo's it's the corporate version I don't know <clears throat> but if you're out of state and you want a Chicago dog there are Portillo's popping up all over the country so um, you know I, I don't I don't dog Portillo's get it anyway so there's books written about the the sandwich and uh, we do love our pizza that's what the natives eat right there and we do love our Italian beef with Giardinera, and I've got Giardinera coming right up. But let's do this. So we're do using Vienna beef, all beef franks, tomato, celery salt, sports peppers, which I'll talk about, pickles, Chicago-style relish, and of course, Cy Rosen's poppy seed bun, yellow mustard, raw onion. That's it. Pretty simple ingredients and very easy to uh, put together. We're gonna boil the hot dog. If you're on the street and there's a street vendor, a hot dog cart, that's what they have. It's just in the boiled water. Otherwise, it's called a charred dog if it's put on the grill. And we're gonna use, uh, steam our bun. I'm gonna be doing that just by simply putting it in the microwave for a couple seconds, wrapped in a paper towel, so the bun becomes nice and soft and warm and yummy. So once our hot dogs are heated up, we're going to assemble our dog. We're going to uh, drag it through the garden, they call that. So yellow mustard, just straight up yellow, plain mustard. No Dijon, no spicy brown, no fancy schmancy mustard here. We're just doing the plain old regular. So our neon green relish, what? makes it neon green blue food coloring and um, some say Flukies is the first restaurant to have brought this about um, but it's the quintessential look for our Chicago dog if in a pinch you don't have that you can just use sweet pickle relish and add some blue food coloring yourself so now the raw chopped onion white onion preferably yellow onion if you have to not purple though or red whichever you call it you can dice your tomatoes though if you want but I'm just doing the little half moons here and um, I am missing a moon I don't know what happened to it I found it later on the floor because yeah I'm wild I'm a beast in the kitchen so when you see that little red basket right there you know you're getting some good eats you know that you're chowing down some very decent delicious junk food now I'm adding the sports peppers. Sports peppers are a cross between a Tabasco pepper and a pepperoncini. They're not really hot. They're, they have a nice bite to them, a nice twang, um, but they're not too heated. And that, those are usually optional, but most people do get that on there with the peppers. And a pickle spear on the side. Some places give you cucumber. And they put it on there like I just did the tomatoes. But the celery salt that is the final piece de la resistance. That was a weird mix of French and Spanish. Inflicts, I don't know what accent that was. But this celery salt is what really 
ties it all, brings it all together, especially putting it on the pickle, believe it or not. It is just, it's really, ooh, I don't know what happened there. Uh, the hot dog that we use has a has a bite to it. This, it's 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 hard to describe. That's why we use the Vienna beef hot dog. You bite into it and it has a bite. So all of those tastes meld together to create just the most amazing hot dog ever. You'll see why people come from far and wide. What am I doing here? I'm getting ready for my jardinera. Jar so I'm boiling some water to sterilize my mason jar. I'm not canning or anything like that. But it, for 10 minutes in boiling water, it will make it so there's less bacteria in the jar. Look at this. This is what Jardinera is. It's a relish. It's an Italian relish. It's very much like uh, a muffalata down in New Orleans that you'll find. But it's not the same. Very similar. We put it all over our Italian beefs. We put it all over our pizza that us Chicago natives eat. We eat the flat squares. We don't eat the deep dish I mean we do eat the deep dish okay I'm not gonna lie once in a while especially when we have y'all friends and families from out of town coming in but we don't put jardinera on the deep dish that would be weird but here's what jardinera is red pepper flakes canola oil olive oil celery carrots white wine vinegar green olives are optional cauliflower bell peppers I'm using sports peppers. Most people use serrano peppers, but sport peppers are usually uh, a big find also in your jardinera. And then the spices, of course, and garlic. Everything else I will link down below. The exact, blah, 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 the exact glitch. I'm glitching um, recipe in the description box below. I'm doing a dry brine. What that means is I'm I chopped all my veggies. You can use a food processor if you'd like. I'm covering all the veggies in a lot of salt my hand is clean and I'm going to cover it and put it in the fridge for 24 hours what this is going to do it's going to pull the moisture out of the veggies so my jardinera will stay crunchy I don't like mine soft some people do and so they will brine their veggies overnight <coughs> so it's been 24 hours so now I've pulled my veggies out of the fridge see what is going on I, I it is Maybe we're parallel shifting right now and I'm, I'm in mid shift. Um, I'm just draining the veggies of their water. See, all that stuff got leached out. That's how you want your base of your jardinera to be. So now I'm gonna just put it back in the big bowl. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, now I'm gonna add my peppers. You don't need to add the peppers or the garlic to your, you know, the stuff you're brining. Just the major players. And then afterwards, you're going to add your peppers chopped up. I just put my ring light on. And I'm going to chop up some garlic too. So about the peppers, yeah, you can use serrano, you can use jalapeno, you can use habanero. You can use as many as you want or as little as you want. In, in the city, you will be asked, do you want mild or hot? You have those two choices. Depending on where you go, I mean, hot can be real hot. So the nice thing about making it at home is you get to control the heat factor. Honestly, it is so like widely available to us here that most of us who live in Chicago, we're not making our own jardinera. But if you do, just know you can control it. Now here I'm using the two oils. Why? I've talked about this in other videos. If you just put straight olive oil in the fridge, in any sort of salad or relish, it will solidify. So then you pull out this jar of stuff and it's like this congealed mess and you got to let it basically defrost um, first I don't have time for that second of all that's gross so putting the canola oil in it that doesn't happen so and canola oil is very neutral flavor it may work with other oils too you can experiment but for me I found canola oil is the best and now uh, just mixing the, the vinegar it's white wine vinegar not white vinegar so, you know, that's a, a distinction that should be pointed out. And then the spices. Um, again, I will link below, and that's only because looking at this video, it's been, a, it's been about a week since I made this. I don't really remember, like, every... I know oregano is the base. I'm using... Those are bay leaves. I put a little bit, just a tiny little bit of fennel, a pepper. Um, I didn't salt much because, you know, the veggies were already salted. 
and a pinch of sugar, which is completely optional. You do not have to use that, but I, you know, I do. Um, and just whisk it up. Now I'm gonna put the veggies in first and I'm gonna do a layering thing. I'm gonna put some veggies, then I'm gonna put some of the, the dressing or the sauce or the, the whatever you wanna call it. And then again, more veggies. Cause I wanna make sure that every vegetable gets covered in the mixture here because like anything else, it, the flavors meld over time. And so this is definitely something that should be served at least 24 hours after you've made it. <clears throat> Some dishes are just like that. They're just better the next day. And this condiment would be one of those things. So you wanna make it ahead of time if you intend on serving it to a lot of people I like mine a little bit more vinegary than oily. There are some jardineras where it's like, oh, it's just saturated in oil and that, I, my, my gallbladder could never, you know? So I make it a little less oily, but again, that's, that's the beauty of making your own stuff is you can customize it to your own taste. I think this might be great on that horseshoe sandwich too, y'all. So, I mean, try it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. And let me know in the comments what state I should do next. I'll pick one anyway, if, even if you don't.